Oh, crap. It's a lot of crap. Tracy Lee is confronted by a huge volume of articles that used to be the dwelling's infrastructure, plus miscellaneous junk the tenants oh left behind. Oh and more clear. Holes in the walls, broken plumbing, more holes. Oh, God, the house is in such a bad state. Somebody's been too lazy to empty teapots and dishwater and things. It's gone straight out the window. Wow, this has definitely been unloved. Just the outside of the property is going to cost thousands to become presentable again. When Tracy Lee notices even the bath has been ditched, does she even dare to go inside? Wow. Complete rebuild. Jared has a pile of work to get done in a short space of time. Busy day planned today. I've had a, I've got quite a number of properties to get around. Hopefully, I've got to make it to the airport to, uh, for 5 p.m. tonight, so I can head off on a family holiday. At 10 a.m., destination. A quick inspection, and then a hinge replacement. But today, nothing seems to fit. This is rubbish. Jared goes old school. This is why he needs a holiday. But whatever extra he puts in today just makes that chilled koru shabli even sweeter. Oh, that didn't hold us up too much. But it's already 11 o'clock. Replacing batteries and smoke alarms, easy peasy. Gaining access through poorly installed deadlocks, difficult. Jared's final visit is to a property in the hillside suburb of Kelburn. He's hoping it's not all downhill from here, even though it is. What's this? A-grade property manager Tracy Lee is investigating a damaged rental on behalf of landlord Chris. Oh, wow. You've done a lot of work. Inside, Tracy Lee's thrilled to see new skirting, new lining and insulation. Wow. She's less than thrilled to see the lengths the former tenants went to to wreck a perfectly good home. This is where the heat pump was, was ripped off the wall. We'd put in a brand new heat pump and um, somebody else decided they'd quite like that. So, and here's our little door situation. This door situation was the precise moment the dwelling's owner was brought to his knees before bringing it to the attention of Tracy. Somebody had actually stolen the door and come in and had another go at the property. If you look at this sort of stuff, this was right through the house, like scratching, and on these balls that we've replaced were holes, and there was actually an X-rated version of duck, 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 except the first letter wasn't D, and it went from small to very big across there, and there were just like sayings and swear words and like somebody was disturbed. So we've had to rejib that bit. In the bathroom, somebody called Ned definitely did give a duck. He even left his phone number for emergencies. This looks like a thirty dollars to $50,000 job for me. You're looking at way more than just replacing damage. You've got loss of revenue, loss of time, and maybe another house off the rental market. So, you know, none of it's ideal. Prue and Michelle are on their way to a final inspection at one of their properties. The neighbours kept ringing, saying 3 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Strangely, neighbours of the tenants reported bizarre noises. Prue and Michelle are determined to get to the bottom of it. Just one moment, Livingston. The path suddenly clears, and the good girls are confronted by the first of many unexplained phenomena. The front door is left wide open. This is, these are going to have to be commercially clean. First impressions are of overall dampness and excess moisture. Mysterious when this house has multiple ventilation options. And it's double glazed. And it's insulated under the floor and in the ceiling. It has a DVS. It has. Prue suspects the DVS system has been disabled and the deviant system has been enabled. I think it was all rooting and a lot of sweat. Very intriguing. The master bedroom is one okay, thing because the drapes can be replaced. But there's a tractor beam of sin pulling Prue and Michelle to the bathroom. They've broken the towel rail. It's not and splayed handprints on the shower stall perspex. But this is... You know it's me. It's 
me. All point to one thing, sleaze. They must have been humping themselves into smells. oblivion. Trust property manager Jared is battling the clock. He's got multiple properties to check and a Fiji flight that leaves at five. What's this? He's just found the last thing he wants to find in a property on a hillside, a huge leak from a gas caliphant. G'day, AJ. How's it going? I've got an urgent job. We've got a Vulcan 300 um, at Gas Main's pressure unit. Um, it's just got water pouring out the side of it. We just need to stop the flow of water and get an assessment of what's going on, so at least I can report back to the owners that are overseas. With a plumber on the way, Jared can leave for his next and final job, a simple matter of prepping a house for sale so the owner can put it on the market. We're heading out to the hut to check on a property where we've had a long-term tenant uh, vacate. He's been living in this place for 35 years. The property's going to the market, and the 35 years of accumulation of stuff um, and wear and tear on the property, we need to get it a little bit more presentable. The house itself perches on top of a popular takeaway bar and a beauty salon. But Jared doesn't need it to be well groomed or delicious, just empty. Jared's disappointed to see this is not the blank canvas he was hoping for. Well, this certainly is a lot different to what I was expecting. Checking the other rooms, a little bit more than we were, were hoping for. Jared is horrified to see that, unlike the takeaway shop downstairs, Still more. the former tenant hasn't taken away anything at all. This is bed, bath, and beyond reasonable. This is multiple trips to the dump when all Jared wants to do is take a trip to the airport. Jared places an urgent call to the office and the Trust Property Management Cavalry. Unfortunately, it's a long overdue lad's lunch today, and nobody's answering. The good girls are deeply unsettled. A sweltering, humid clag has enveloped one of their properties after a group of young men moved out. That'll need new filters and... I like the fly dirt. ..cleaning. Although the ceiling's not so bad, just fly dirt. And look at the front of that heat pump. I bet that's... I wouldn't want to look at those filters. <laughs> Boar. Boar. In the kitchen, grime oh. and slime. The boys were clearly too busy being dirty to clean. No. And look at the... Mm. Oh, look, there's the cleaning products. They've left them They've for me. The yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Gloves. Look at in here. Look in here. Oh. This when Michelle first applied for her job at Good Girls, Prue did say there'd be days like this. The kitchen is an utter disgrace. Um, the guttering needs clearing, that's leaking. While the ex-tenants are at fault with the cleaning, it was also on them to contact their property manager when something needed fixing, like the guttering. And the gardening. Yeah. See, once there would have been beans and it would have been nice. So there's a bit of work to be done, isn't there, before we can put anyone in it? Quite a bit. Yes, we'll need to make a big list and get onto it. This property needs the full Good Girls restoration treatment because Prue already knows a wholesome threesome who could make a happy home here. He wants to move in here with a married couple, friends of his. That would be perfect. Prue's cleaners have been through the house like a Canterbury Norwester, and new tenants are in. He has given us permission to pop by today. Um, he's very, very happy living there. He said it's a great place, thank you. And he's happy for us to pop by and just have a look and look at the results. The XX tenants might have to trim their expenditure. Excited with that. But at the address, everything appears trim and tidy for the tenant and his lovely, lucky little family. It's better than when the boys were living here. Yeah. Those party boys. So the children's rooms are very tidy. New curtains and all the bedrooms are unlikely to become stuck to the window sills ever again. Well, those windows look nice and clean, don't they? And there's no 
rubber residue. And there's no condensation? No. Looks good. The bathroom's been disinfected and the kitchen scrubbed from top to bottom. This is miles better because this was revolting. The inside of the dishwasher is crystal clean and the outside of the house is even better. It was up here. <laughs> the garden bed. Yeah. So at least we've got something going on in there. Great spot for veg. Mm. Or herbs, because you're so close to the kitchen. Mm. Chalk this up as a win for the good girls. They'll never look back. Not with that broken wing mirror anyway. I'm good very see, pleased. Good to see a family making it their home, isn't it? Holiday hopeful Jared has only three hours to get rid of a house lot of chattels left behind a tenant prior to sale of the property. His flight for a family holiday leaves at 5pm sharp. But call after call after text to the office for help has gone unanswered. After five frustrating minutes, Jared has no choice but to roll up his non-existent sleeves and get down to business if he wants to get to the airport on time. So, I might as well uh, be productive while I'm waiting. Finally, the phone rings. It's good news. It's Mr Fixit Miles, and he's on his way. So what I'm seeing is um, yeah, just rubbish furniture, stuff that's damaged, broken handles, broken drawers, broken chairs. Backing a trailer into a tight space is never easy, but under time pressure when the boss's check-in's only a couple of hours away... Yep, keep coming. ..even the most seasoned operator can make mistakes. Hold on, wait there. Yep, stop there for now. But there's no mistaking what's going to happen to the furniture. Art Deco. Early 80s. Naughty 90s. Out it goes, into the cage and off to the dump. And Jared's off to the airport to meet the family to fly to their Pacific Island paradise. I'm shooting off. Um, I'll leave you, leave you to it. But let me know how you get on. Um, uh, with the, the last of the load and lifting up that carpet. No worries. OK, we'll catch you later. Yes, yeah, so that's made for a, a busier morning than I expected. Um, uh, good that Miles was available to, to come out there and get cracking onto that quickly. Uh, There's uh, still a big job uh, ahead of him with carpet removal and getting the place cleaned. Um, but I think uh, helping him get all of that furniture out of the place gave him a good, good start on it. Jared is grateful. Miles will be getting a family-sized Toblerone in just seven sleeps. Tracy Lee from A-Grade Property Management is heading back to a client's rental, trashed to the point of a write-off. We've had quite a bit of destruction caused by some by prior tenants and some by people breaking in. It's the famous grapefruit house where um, there was so many grapefruit on the ground, it was woeful. The owner popped out with his little boy and they bagged a whole lot up and he sold it for a dollar, it sold them for a dollar each to the local gas station. So we're going to go and just check the building progress. We're told it's nearly done. The very best tradies money can buy have been busy here for weeks and just like the night before Christmas, Trace could hardly sleep last night, such as her excitement. The grounds are looking lovely, they've been mown. The rubbish has been completely cleared. It's not the dump site that it was. Only a few weeks ago, locals thought this house was actually a new council rubbish dump with a lovely feature citrus tree. The outside's been painted. That all looks really fresh. The gutters have been done. Looks like a different house from the outside already, so that's just so good. While the grounds and exterior cladding have been pimped and prettied up, unbelievably, the front door is still a sheet of plywood. Surely it hasn't been stolen again. The builder does have the door, but because we've had two or three of them stolen, he's not putting it up till we're ready to market the property. So that's stored at his place still. Um, also the hot water cylinder, so nobody steals that. Oh, wow. This is 
great. Last time, the kitchen was only an abstract concept. And there was a wall sort of here and a really tiny rotten kitchen with awful cupboards but that have been completely trashed. Now it's real, stunning and just waiting for a suburban master chef to bring it back to life. This is going to be really nice for someone. We've replaced the heat pump. The heat pump's back on the wall. The much admired heat pump had been stolen more than once for its valuable 20 bucks worth of copper. But with a burglar alarm installed, it's unlikely to happen again. In the bedroom, tagging and competitive hole smashing games are a thing of the past. There were so many messages on these walls. There were little holes dug into the floor. And there were like really, really gross messages carved into the walls and written in the walls. Lovely, nice and white and fresh and clean. All in all, a remarkable transformation. This house has gone from being the worst house on the best street to the best house on the best street. Happy days and a happy outcome for Tracy Lee. I think there's some bits of the old house you left. Yeah, the roof and the walls. Well, no, not even all the walls are still there. So it's had a total makeover. Um, I'm really happy with the results and um, wouldn't mind a total makeover myself, to be honest.